what to keep and what it can take away. So to give you the best chances of having the best results with this background remover, when you are taking the picture that you intend to have the background removed from, make sure that your background is as clear as possible from any clutter and the more plain, the better your results will be. Another thing you should know about Canva's background remover is that it's only available for pro users and it's really affordable. It's about $10 a month if you pay yearly and then you have full access to that background remover. But if you're not ready to make that commitment yet, I have another option for you and that is this website here, remove.bg. This website works in exactly the same way as Canva's background remover. It automatically removes the background for you and it's free to use. Actually, this Canva background is the same exact thing because they partnered to make the software available there. So just come here, upload your image, wait a moment while it does its thing and then it'll show you your image with the background removed from it. From here, all you have to do is download the image. It'll show here towards the bottom. Go back to Canva, click and hold the image file and then drop it into Canva and then you can proceed to make your design like that. In some ways, Using this website is actually better because you have this edit option here and from here you can choose a blurry background. You can also choose a photo background. They have many options here. And here they also have the erase and restore option. So for example, that little part where it took off too much of my arm, I can click there and restore that part. So if you want to use this instead of Canva to make the edits exactly how you want to make them, then that's an option too. To watch a full tutorial on this website, go watch the recent video I did called How to Make and Upload YouTube Thumbnails. There I show you more about this website. Moving on to the next design tip and that is how to add an outline around your photo. First here, I'm going to change my background so that you can actually see the white outline when I add one. From here, we're going to duplicate the image of the photo that we had the background removed from. I'm going to click on the one in the back, click effects again, and this time we're going to use a duotone effect. As you see, I have a list of effects here, but if you don't see the same ones, that is because you need to connect them. Look for the duotone effect and click connect, and then you should see it. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom to get to it and if I click on see all, here you can see all the type of dual tone effects that there is. But it doesn't really matter which one I choose because I'm going to end up changing it to white anyway. So let's go with this cherry dual tone effect and that is what it looks like. But to get to making it white, we're going to click on the menu that's on the inside square of it the one with the three lines and circles. And here we can change the highlights and the shadows. We're gonna change both of them to white. So click the circle, drag it all the way to the top left-hand corner. And we're gonna do the same thing for shadows, all the way to the top left-hand corner. And that will give us a completely white image that we can use as an outline. Here you can mess with the intensity if you want, but I'm gonna keep it all the way white and click apply. From here, it's all about messing with it a bit, kind of shifting things around. It requires a little bit of patience. One tip that I do have for you is to use the arrows on your keyboard so that you can move images slightly. It gives you just a little bit more control as opposed to using your mouse. Sometimes images can move a whole lot. With the arrows, it moves just a tiny bit so you can adjust things. Here, all I'm doing is grouping these two images together just so that they can stay together as I continue my design. It doesn't move around too much. And that is basically it for how to add an outline to your, to your graphic. Make sure that you also try out the other effects. You can make it green, purple, orange. You can make it glitch, whatever you want. This is just the method, but there are countless things you can do with it. For the next tip, let's talk about backgrounds. Here on this image, I have this diamond background that I got from Canva's library. It was pre-made, but did you know you can also change the colors of their pre-made backgrounds? So don't steer away from using this large library of backgrounds they have just because it's not the color you want it to be. Even this polka dot one, if I click to apply, 
I can change the color of it so that it matches something that I want. And for the next background design tip, I'm going to show you how I added a gradient background to a thumbnail. This is from a thumbnail that I made for my previous video on how to create YouTube end cards. And I was stuck between leaving it all white or adding some color. So I decided to go with this gradient blue background. I'm going to be deleting this background just to show you how I went ahead and added it. So first we're going to elements. Then you're going to search for the word gradient. And I already have it here on my search, so I'm just going to click on it. And here you have a lot of different options when it comes to gradient designs. They have different shapes and a lot of different cool things that you can play around with. But what we're looking for is the square that's a little bit clear and a little bit colored. So I'm going to add that to my design. I'm going to stretch it out so that it fits. Then the next thing we're going to do is change the color of this because I don't really want that purple. It clashes too much with the end screens I have there. So I went with this blue. And then the next thing we want to do is add it to the other side. So we're going to flip it horizontally, scoot it over and adjust it. And from here we're going to go to position and click backwards until all of our elements are in the front where we can see them. From here you have many options on how to keep adjusting. You can stretch out this element until it's how you like it. Or you can click duplicate to make another gradient element and kind of mess around with it so that it's a little more darker on one side a little more lighter on another side and you can just play around with those two options stretch it out duplicate add more until you like the gradients of it for the final two tips we're going to talk about text so going back to the thumbnail i created recently i added some drop shadow to this text which is just the black outlined around it i like to add this to text sometimes to make it stand out i feel like it really makes it pop when you look at it on a thumbnail on youtube so i'm going to delete it now and show you how i made it from scratch going to text here and i'm just going to choose any of their text templates they have here stretch it out a bit so that you're able to see it and now I'm just going to ungroup these two sets of text because I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this bottom one just to, so that I can keep it simple and just show you with this cheers. What we're going to do is duplicate the text kind of like we did with the outline around the photograph. We're going to change the color of the back, uh, the back part of the text. We're going with pink here. And from here it's all about adjusting it, making it look like you want it. You can make it look like a drop shadow so that it's slightly behind. You can make it look like an outline or you can make it look like 3D depending on how you position. So just play around with this method here. Choose different colors, make the text far apart from each other or just a tiny bit and you'll get different effects. You can add the black on top or the pink on top to see what looks better for you. For the final design tip, we're gonna talk about how to add foil, silver, and other texture to text. Now for these, we have to look for a photo holder. So go to elements and look for the letters that you want. Unfortunately, you can't do a whole word together. You have to look for these letters individually. Anything that has this like green and blue clouds type thing is a photo holder. So what we're essentially going to do is add a photo inside each of these letters. So look for all the letters that you want. I'm going to go to recently used because I know that I've used some recently and add them to my picture here. And for the photo to add inside these letters, you can click down here on more. Click on either Pixabay or Pexel and search for a background that you can add inside your letters. You can search for gold, silver, rose gold. You can search for pattern backgrounds or whatever you want. And then just hover over the letter. Wait till you see that it's kind of inside the letter and then let go and it should stay right where the photo holder is. Another option you have is to upload your own background. You can go on Google and search for any sort of textured background you want, upload it here on Canva, and then add it to your letter. 
So here I have added it to all my letters. I'm just going to change the background so you can see the final result. As you can see, this is just a fun way to add a little spunk to whatever graphic design you're making and make it look a little bit unique. I'm working on another Canva video where I will be sharing more hacks on how to create designs faster and with more ease. So if you don't want to miss out on that one, make sure that you subscribe so that you will know when it's uploaded. Make sure to like this video if you found it helpful. And for more Canva tutorials, click the playlist that's on your screen right now. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.